All right, so if you remember, we're trying to factor the denominators of these things, find out what the LCD is, using that to make up an equivalent rational expression, and then we get to add and subtract those, add or subtract those uh, fractions. Finish that one quickly. There's another one that you can work on. All right, guys, let's get started on this thing. So we know when we're dealing with rational expressions, the first thing we always do is at least factor the denominators. And especially in this case, because if we're looking for the LCD, what we know is that the LCD is the largest power of each different factor. We can't find factors unless this thing is, of course, factored. So when we factor our, our first example here, the x plus 5, we leave that alone. There's nothing we can do there. However, the x squared minus 25, that should just be instant for us. We're going to get 12x over what's that factor as? Sure. And you know it really doesn't matter the order. You can switch those things around, it's fine. Did you factor that okay? Okay. Then we go and find our L C D because we realize right now we do not have a common denominator and we need one. So our L C D is basically just a listing of all the different factors. So when I look at this thing, I see the x minus five. I see the x plus 5, and then I have an x plus 5 over here, but because that's in a different fraction, it's already counted. We've already got the LCD. How many people were able to find the LCD? Good. Now we're going to use that to make some equivalent rational expressions. That means fractions of the same value. It just looks a little different. We're purposely unsimplifying here. On the left-hand side, I already have the LCD down there. That's great. I don't need to do anything to that fraction. On the right-hand side, though, well, I have x plus 5. That's great, but what else am I missing? And that's what I'm going to be multiplying by. Of course, we know how to multiply fractions. We extend our line. We put parentheses where appropriate. And what we get to do now is instead of distributing right now, instead of distributing right now, we're going to make one fraction out of it first. And I think I've shown you the reason why, right? It's basically because of that, that minus sign. If you distribute now and you get 6x minus 30 and you keep that minus 30 all the way down, you're going to get the wrong answer. What's going to happen in this problem is that when we write this as one fraction, you're going to see this. We'll get the 12x, sure. We'll get the minus, and we'll get 6 times the quantity x minus 5. But when you look at that, do you notice that that minus has to distribute? We had that, I think, ending yesterday, uh, where we, we really do want to write it as one fraction because we change a fraction problem into just a combined like terms problem with a little bit of distribution. That makes things a little bit easier to see for us. So we'll keep going on this. We'll have, of course, 12x minus 6x and then plus 30. Oh, x plus 5, x minus 5. Did you make it that far? Okay. What now? Great. So we can do that. We've got a couple of them. We certainly don't want to, I hope you didn't do this, but back on the last step, we certainly don't want to simplify here. We talked about that last time, but why can't we simplify it here? Because the top simplifies the Very good. Yeah, that's linked. This is, like, this is like a term. It's like one big term. 
can't cancel parts of terms, can't simplify that. Uh, because that minus right there, it's, we, we cannot do that. Uh, so we'll combine our like terms here, we'll get 6x plus 30. Is there anything else that we can do? What's that? Sure, yeah, yeah. We can factor that thing. We can factor the 6 out. If we do, we get x plus 5 over x plus 5 times x minus 5. Does anything simplify? Yeah, so it was worth our time to actually go and factor that thing because x plus 5s are going to go away. Do you notice something on here? These problems, they can get you if you're not watching the sign because check it out. Even if you, if you had not distributed the negative and you got minus 30, it's going to look like you can factor it if that's a minus 30, right? And you're, you're going to simplify the wrong thing. It's still going to look like you can simplify it, so you're going to probably think you're doing it right. You need to be real careful on this stuff. That way you get down to here and you're not like, oh yeah, I'm crushing up the x minus 5s. No, we're not. We're crushing up x plus 5s. Also, one more thing. I've noticed this on some of your homework. Uh, some people have been doing this where there's like an x plus 5, and pretend that's an x plus 5. Let's pretend for a second. I'm going to change it back. But let's pretend this was an x plus 5. I have some people who are crossing out all three of these. And we can't do that. It matches up one for one. So if you get rid of this one, you can't also get rid of the other one. Are you with me on that? It's one for one on this. So let me change it back to the minus. That's what it, what's supposed to be. And then, of course, we can simplify the x plus 5s. And our answer is 6 over x minus 5. Did you make it down that far? How many people made it to, let's, let's all raise your hands. Everybody, because I know you all did the problem, right? Everybody raise your hand. That means raise your hand. Okay, good. How many people made, uh, the, keep your hands up. <laughs> did you hear? Drop your hands if you didn't. Uh, to here? Good. Here? Okay. Here. Okay, that's the minus sign. Watch your minus sign. Uh, here. And all the way down. Good for you, okay. So I saw a lot of people drop their hands between this step and this step. If you, you are one of those people, then that's where you're making your mistake, right? You need to know that. You need to kind of understand where you're making your mistake. It's not all about me just telling you what to do. It's about you understanding where those problems are coming in. That way you can fix them. Are, are you getting you're in college now and that's, I'm not supposed to hold your hand. You're supposed to kind of realize what's going on, okay? So if that's you, notice next time that your distribution is kind of going wrong and keep a special eye on that. Question. Never mind, I just thought. I was wondering I love what happened to the, to the 12x, <laughs> but then I realized I went to a positive 6. We're combining those two. Got it. Okay. That's one of my favorite type of question. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we did one just like this last time. I just want to refresh your memory on what to do. Firstly, question, is our LCD 5y plus 1? Now we can't do that. The 5y has to be a factor. Right now the 5y is a term that doesn't work for us. So our LCD in this case, we do need the 5y, and we also need the y plus 1. That's, this, those both have to be there. Uh, then we check, we go, do we have the 5y? Yeah. Do we have the y plus 1? Yeah. That's our LCD in this case. After that, we're going to multiply both sides because we need some extra stuff over here. We don't have everything we need. On the left-hand side, what am I multiplying by everybody? That wasn't everybody, but I'll take it. Okay. And on the right-hand side, what are we multiplying by? Good. Again, we extend our <coughs> fractions. We put our parentheses where we need them. On the numerator, we're going to get, I'm going to write the 3 first, 3y plus 1. On the denominator, am I going to distribute the denominators, folks? No. No, never distribute denominators. My goodness, we're trying to simplify them, right? So leave those denominators the way they are. All I'm going to do is write the 5y first. And what's on the second part of our numerator? Sure. I'm just going to write 10y in this case. Since we had our common denominator, we have our 5y times y plus 1, that's our 
common denominator here. We've combined to make one fraction. We have a 3 first, that's the only difference. We have 10 y. So I've skipped the intermediate step of reorganizing both my fractions. Nod your head if you're still okay with this. Okay. One question I have for you, can I cross out the y plus 1s? No. no. Definitely not. That's the same question as this, can I cross out the x minus 5s? No. It's connected by that plus, I can't do anything about it. One thing I can do is distribute the numerator and combine like terms and then see if I can factor. So we will do that, we'll get 3y plus 3 plus 10y over 5y, <coughs> y plus 1. When we combine some like terms, we're going to get 13y plus 3. Now 13y plus 3, can you factor that? No. Then that's your answer. That's all you can do with it. If you can't factor the numerator after you combine like terms, you're done. You're done. Don't distribute the denominator. Don't start canceling out y's. You're done on that problem. Okay, now we're almost done with adding, subtracting, rational expressions. There are a few more examples. Then we'll get on into uh, solving, which is it's kind of fun. I think you're going to like the solving. You're, you'll like it more than this. And if you like this, that means you're going to love solving, right? <laughs> Obviously. Uh, so there is one thing I do want to show you, though. It's two different problems. Neither of them are very hard. It, I, well, if you remember what I tell you, neither of them are very hard. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure that you see them at least once. <coughs> I kind of previewed this example uh, last time in class or the time before that, one or the other, that we don't exactly have an LCD here, but it's very, very close. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. You could do this one of two ways. Okay. You could find your LCD the same way you did over here and have LCD is x <coughs> minus 6 and 6 minus x. Do you see what I'm talking about? You could do that. It would take you a lot more work because you have to multiply here. Do you see what I'm talking about? x minus 6 over here. You have to multiply here, 6 minus x. However, if you do a little manipulation and do what I told you about keeping the largest power of x, if you do that, then you don't even need to find an LCD. It already really has one. <coughs> Uh, specifically, what I'm talking about is not here. This is great. It's what we want. But here, notice how the x has that minus in front of it. If we factor appropriately, we can get rid of that. So I'm going to leave the 10 over x minus 6. But this 15 over 6 minus x, I'm going to factor a negative out of the denominator. If I do that, it changes from positive 6 to negative 6 and negative x to positive or plus x. I'm going to show you step by step on this so you really see what's going on. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. We've done this several times in class, so hopefully this is not a big deal. If we keep going, we have 10 over x minus 6 minus 15 over negative 1 times, I'm going to switch those around. I've done that a couple times also. Instead of negative x plus, I'm sorry, negative 6 plus x, I'm going to get x minus 6. We've seen that before too, right? Now here's the cool part. Just like you have an example like this. 7 minus negative 2. What's 7 minus negative 2 really mean? 7 plus 2. Good, because you're really taking away a debt or you're adding. Like if I took away your debt, it's like I'm giving you money, right? I'm taking away, subtracting a negative number. I'm add, actually adding to it. So this becomes 7 plus 2. Same thing happens here you are subtracting a negative. This negative doesn't have to necessarily be on the denominator. It could be here or in the middle or in the top. It doesn't really matter. So we have subtracting a negative. These two signs are going to become what? Good. 